Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I'm with Chris. We're gonna talk about real estate cycles. And this is exciting because I get to watch one of my students really experience this for the first time ever, understanding that the sun comes out tomorrow, you want to be, patience is a virtue and it saves you a lot of money. And we're gonna use one house, we're gonna walk by it in a second as an example. Um, Chris is one of the masterclass, real estate masterclass students. So he's every month uh, joining us for live coaching calls and all that stuff. If you want, uh, he's taken every class I think that I've ever given in real estate. Um, we're giving a deal right now for the next few days, lowest price ever, it includes coaching calls, uh, all the courses I've ever done and all the future real estate courses I'm gonna do. And honestly, I give you zero excuse uh, excuses to save tens of thousands of dollars, right, yep. Chris? Yep. All right, so you wanted to take me out here because you did some research, and this is a neighborhood I actually wanted to purchase in because it has, most of these places have dual three-car garages with RV parking. I love it, Just right? Just about every home. Yeah, and you're you're a dirt biker, you're a racer, you 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 like your toys, and, and you need the storage space just like the Ninja does <laughs> for cars. So um, let's talk about this house that we're about to pass up. What are, What is it that you're learning about real estate cycles and where this owner is right now? Well, what caught my eye about this home, um, after going through the real estate cycles masterclass and all that, is I happened to notice on Zillow that in 2007, when this house was built, the homeowner paid $908,000 for it. And that is a lot of money for this area back in 07. That Absolutely. would have been one of the nicest houses in the city. Yeah, right. Okay. definitely. Right. And in 2012, when the market cycle was starting to change again yeah uh the house went up on the market for six hundred and eighty nine thousand, and then they increased it to 698 and it came back off the market and now it's re-emerged yep uh, and it's probably more than likely a it was the different did it sell at the 600 price no it did not no. so what's shocking to me is that had to have been then the original owner because if it was a bank that took it over they would have sold it right yeah, they, they would have sold it it didn't sell it didn't change hands didn't change tax numbers or any of that stuff uh so uh check this out so i'm gonna, just going to turn around here and show you this is the back side of the house and you can see it's got you know a what three car garage with an an x another structure it's they're just incredible yeah uh, we're beautiful gonna cruise, area yeah gorgeous area so we're gonna cruise by it and so this person obviously in the depths of the great recession was asking way less for this house now a lot of people would think that they were in trouble but you know i've taught this in the course where there are times when you pay let's say 900 grand for a house and everything's falling apart all around you well if your house is falling and let's say it's at 700 grand there are homes that were priced at two million that are now way less, a million dollars. And so it's actually, it would actually behoove you sometimes if you had the money to sell at a loss, book the loss for your taxes, then go and buy the dream house that you have or have always wanted, like the, the lakefront property in Lake Tahoe, let's say, things right. like that. Right. So so what else are you seeing about these cycles that's interesting? Where Where is this house specifically at right now? They're asking $1.4 million for it right now. Okay, and what kind of um, competition does this seller have in this neighborhood that you've noticed? Uh, most every single one of these houses are right at 1 million or a little above. That's right, and so he's priced a little high, ironically. Yeah, yeah so it's so where he couldn't sell back in, oh, was it 2012? 2012. He couldn't sell because probably was not priced aggressively enough. He's in the exact same position. I say he, I don't know if it's a he or she, but, um, they're in the exact same position now. They're not aggressively pricing. There's a couple homes without the extra garage and they're asking 400,000 less. Yes. So that's huge. And this house has been on the market for over a hundred days. Exactly, and that's massive because usually in this neighborhood, houses are staying on the market between 60 and 75 and they're going pending around 1.1, 1.2 million. Yep. So. What is this telling you? Because uh, you've also probably seen the inventory here has increased about oh. uh, 2.5 times. At least, I think probably three months ago, Yeah, there wasn't a house for sale in here. Or yeah. if there was, it There was, was two, because I was looking at them. Okay, two. Yeah. Yeah. And now there's probably, what, 10 or 11? Yep, and that's exciting because not only do you have used homes for sale, there's also a builder that's still building, the same builder that built this uh, block, what, in 2007, and again, I've got to stress, 2007 was the top of the top. And, you know, to buy a house like this, this was the Ritz in this part of, uh, let's say, Reno Nevada, Reno, Nevada. And so he bought at the top, now trying to sell as we've already passed the top and we're going down. 
Right. It's incredible. So what are some other things that you're thinking about as you're, because you're a home buyer, you want to buy a home, you're already seeing people can sell their concessions, both for new homes and used homes. What else are, is catching your eye about what's going on in just the last three months since we started working together? Is, well, one, being able to identify the cycle. I would have never thought to look at, wow, he paid, they paid 900,000 in 2007. Yep. Wouldn't have crossed my mind because yep. I didn't understand cycles. Yeah. So as soon as I saw it, I was like, wow, I got to take a look at this and see if it fits what I've learned in the course. Totally. Right? And totally. it absolutely does to the T, especially when he also went to try to sell it at the bottom. Yeah, exactly. And couldn't sell it for two years. Yep. And, and so then went off the market. Took it off the market. And so another thing that's really interesting to me is that people don't realize because there are some people that just think real estate's going to keep going up. But all of these people have a ton of equity built into this house. You know, if they bought, because that house that we were just talking about, that actually had the additional garage add-on. And in 2007, that would have cost about an additional 85 to $110,000. Yeah, so a lot of these homes actually didn't have that done until later, or they don't have them done at all, right? And so there are people sitting on, no joke, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars worth of equity that they could instantly, if they see things are going bad and they want to get out of town, they could pull the rip cord and drop that price. And you're already seeing sellers drop prices, right? They are, which is what brought us back out here again. Exactly. I just saw a house for 1.2 million. It sat on the market at 60 days. They dropped it 200 grand and it's still not being shown. And I am like a vulture on this thing because I want to go pick, pick that up around Christmas time because Christmas is one of the best times of year to buy. Yep. And it's interesting because you and your wife have made the decision. You're already all in, but you're, you know, you're, you're experiencing some emotions. But one thing that's keeping, I think, your emotions back, especially your wife, I'll bet, is because she's seeing the price drops too. She is. She's seeing it and she's starting to understand the value. Yep. Um, one of just the course in and of itself and being able to ask the questions, be able to assess what you're looking at yeah. and understand what I'm seeing. Where yep. before, I would have never noticed that. I would have just priced, I would have just taken a look at that house and moved on because it was out of my price range. My price range. Now but you're now trying to figure out it's negotiations. It's totally flipped and it's like, <laughs> wow. You know, so yeah, it has really just changed your, it changed my perspective. Yeah. And it's gotten me excited where I just looked at buying another home. Yep. As just being a daunting task that's going to take me away from working on the business, things like that, yep. to the point where I'm actually excited. Yeah. And, and looking forward to what is to come. And everyone, I don't want to tell too much about Chris's life, but Chris is actually a very successful entrepreneur, owns a large business, and just found himself in life renting and, and just sort of like, it just what happened? Like one day you just went, what the heck am I doing? Yeah, a lot of it was COVID that kind of took put my head down. I had to do a lot of work and take care of things. And when I looked up, the market was crazy. Um, and we missed, missed that, missed run that up. little, yeah, that, that time frame. Um, but now it's kind of like, well, just because the market is where it is. Yeah. One thing I learned is, is buying it correctly. And, this and is, that is what has got me excited about yep. it. Well, and all around the country, people talk about how homes doubled, right? Or sometimes even tripled. But this is a, this neighborhood is a prime example of what happened during the last cycle. This neighborhood was built at the top of the top, yep. right before the Great uh, Recession bubble blew. And so they've only got about $400,000 on top. This neighborhood has only appreciated, and I can't say appreciated because nothing's sold here yet. Um, no. You know, the sales are going to tell, the comps are going to tell the appreciation. Um, it's only went up about... I don't know, 50% since 2007. In so, some of them. Yeah. yeah and so exactly. that's what gets me really excited. There is so many deals to come. The thing is, is you need to learn about the cycles. You need to learn how to negotiate, uh, even negotiate your mortgages. I mean, that's an eye opener for a lot of students right now. And that's why I want to open this up for a handful of days. We're going to open this up to the public. I've only done this once, okay, for three days back in January. And that's where Chris jumped on and has been uh, learning all this Stuff, and now he's actively negotiating and buying his uh, house, or you're about to. I, I still think you need to wait a few months, but we'll see how this we goes. Are. Yeah, I have another student that just closed and bought one of the cheapest houses in this area and is so ecstatic. He's actually more ecstatic. The house is going to drop in value. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? When I can yep. show students why you want to buy now, the you know how you can be successful now, and then how you can go crush it in rentals later. 
I've done my job. So I'm gonna throw that link down there. It's the lowest price we've ever offered. Um, uh, we've only done this once, so it's the same price as we did back then group coaching calls, all that stuff. You will have no excuses after I'm done with you. I'm not joking. And every class in the future I make on real estate, you get for free. So I wanna make this a no brainer deal. So go check that link out. Thank you so much, Chris. Absolutely. If these kind of videos help you, please let us know and we'll make more as Chris goes and finds more deals. And this is what helps me when my students are coming back and going, oh my gosh, it's like you said, but I found this and we could talk about it. So if it's helping you, let me know down in the comment section. We'll make more videos about this. Does and that sound I, good? Yeah, go I think it sounds fantastic. And I, I really truly believe it takes a lot of the fear, so to speak, out of buying in a time like this. Yeah. Because there's going to be, if you, especially with me, I'm already looking at when's the next rental coming on board yeah. um, kind of thing. But at least I know that I have the confidence to buy it right. Oh, yeah. And if it goes down some, that just means there's going to be more opportunities in the future. Yeah, you're going to crush it. I so. can't wait. Well, thanks, Chris. Thank you, everyone, for watching. The Economic Ninja is out.